This video is going to be on changing the axle seal in a 2008 F-150 with an 8.8 .8 inch axle. First thing you want to do is get it up on jack stands, both sides. You got to pull this tire and brake assembly. But you got to take that cover off and you got to be able to turn the carrier. So the drive shaft has to turn. So you want both tires clearing the ground. To make the ease of the caliper coming off, I put a screwdriver in here in between the rotor and the caliper and just kind of pull the caliper, which I've already done, until you don't have the pads on the rotor anymore. So you can lift this out of the way once you undo the, you got to undo this bolt and this bolt and then I'll set the caliper with the pads up there or something. So when I take the diff covers off, I take all the bolts out except for one, then I can break it loose. And it just hangs there, it doesn't uh, fall in my pan. I don't, I loosen it up about halfway out so that, you know, you can move, pry it loose and move the, the cover. So now I can take that last bolt out and uh, pull the cover off. Here we got the cover off. Now I'm going to go put the truck in neutral so I can turn this carrier assembly. You got to take this bolt out so you can push that pin out. Then you can push the axle in and take a little C clip out, and then the axle shaft will slide out. But you got to have it so you can push that out and it'll hit the pinion gear the way it's positioned. But I'm just going to go put the transmission in neutral now. Well, this is a little difficult to video and not get my camera oily, but I loosened this bolt up before I put the truck in neutral so I can take it out. This is what holds this pin in. See how I can push it now? So I want to push that pin out. And I'm not going to take it all the way out. I'm just going to take it. And I didn't even, guess I didn't even need to put the truck in neutral. I can move this pin without changing the position of the... I might have to to roll it a little just to get the C-clip out. But okay, there you go. So I'm just going to take the pin out. Then I won't... Uh, then I won't... Um, misplace it or lose it or anything okay so now get this thing untangled here so now you can see the end of the axle shaft there so that axle I'm take my foot and push it in there you go so now that's in there's a little c-clip on there and again this is difficult not getting gear oil on my camera and doing this and then I take a magnet or needle nose pliers or whatever and there's an o-ring on that um, c-clip in there so you got to be careful you don't bugger it okay there's the there's the c-clip that's why they call it a c-clip and now the axle shaft will come out of the differential housing. So now you can see the axle shaft just pulls out. There's the seal that's leaking. You can see the parking brake shoes in the parking brake drum. They're just soaked with uh, gear oil, so I'll have to clean them up. Use brake clean. One thing you want to do when you have an axle shaft seal leaking is look really closely at where your bearing runs. This bearing runs on the shaft. If there's any pits or imperfections in it, replace your shaft. That shaft looks good. Um, I did get a bearing, so I might put a bearing in it. I might not, but let's get that cleaned up and then I'll get the seal out. The axle shaft seal is out. If you want to get this, I'm not going to change the bearing. The bearing isn't pitted. The, the uh, race isn't pitted. There's nothing wrong with the bearing. I'm just going to leave it alone. But you'd take a uh, fingered puller with a slide hammer and hammer that out with a slide hammer and then drive in your new one and uh, put your new seal in. So I'm going to 
put the seal in. I'm not going to video it because I want to get it in nice and square, you know. So I'm going to put a block. i got to hold the block and tap it in. So let me get the new seal and we'll get it in. New seal's in. Now I'm going to put some gear oil on the seal so it doesn't run dry. I might pour a little bit just into that bearing. There's still oil in it, but I don't want to run any of this dry, so it's important you put a little gear oil on your seal. And when they talk about the O-ring on the shaft, and I, you can see that little O-ring in there. You don't want to lose that. If it's missing, replace it. But that's where the C-clip goes. It holds the that's all it holds the axle shaft in the truck is that little C-clip. Right, one thing you don't want to do while your uh, shaft is out is turn the, the shafts because your spider gears will fall out. So I'm going to put the little C-clip back in. And then push the, sh the rotor so that, see how that sets right into that gear now? And now I'm going to try and set the light to where you can see and I'm going to try and hold this and now I can put the shaft back in. And uh, hopefully, well, I'll just have to push it with my fingers. I got to clean the threads out in there and I want to clean the threads off on the bolt wherever it may have gone right here and put some Loctite on it. They tell you to replace the bolt because this is factory Loctite on the threads but if you don't replace it you got to clean it up and re-Loctite it and you got to make sure you have the hole the threads in that hole up there clean so I'm going to hit that with some brake cleaner and this and get some Loctite on it and then we'll put the bolt in torque it down and then I just put a uh, some paper towel around there so I can clean this parting surface off so I don't get any crud on the ring, and ring gear or the carrier or anything and then when I'm done I'll take that towel out and spray it all clean with brake clean and make sure there's no brake clean down. There's a little dip down in, in this part here to you know right down in there that collects crud so I'll uh, wipe that out really good when I'm done too and then I'll clean the cover up and we'll lube it up. I already put the brake caliper back on and uh, it should be done so we'll be done here hopefully very soon okay I got the cover all cleaned up cleanliness is important because there's no filter on the differential so anything you leave in it is going to run in the gear lube as long as it's in there so make sure it's all clean this is the stuff I'm going to use to uh, seal the cover on and uh, let's get to it. See I got that all nice and clean too. All the parting surfaces are clean. The ring gear pinion got a little pocket down in the, I don't know if that shows up or not, but anyway you got to clean that out. Um, just make sure it's all clean. It's the key. That's probably taken me longer to clean everything up and get it ready to put together than do the whole job. Okay, so I got the diff cover back on. Like I say, the brakes are on. This is what I use to fill it up. It's a suction gun. It takes five and a half pints. So basically, almost three quarts of lube. So that is the diff plug. And I just use a ratchet with a really short extension. It's 3 8 square. So I'm going to need two hands and I'll get that plug out. So I got the plug out. I just had to use a longer extension on my ratchet so I could clear the the housing. This my ratchet hit this. So I had to, you know, just no big deal. So let me get the oil in it and it'll be done. Alright, there we are. We're all finished. Ran it just on the jack here, so everything seems to be good. Anyway, if you like my video, hit the like button. If you enjoy my channel, please subscribe, and thank you for watching.